And uh, ironically, this guitar doesn't even sound like a Telecaster, so it's kind of funny. It's kind of ironic. <laughs> All the electric guitars to choose from, why the Telecaster? The answer is pretty simple. It was my desire to play and sound like Radiohead. So, like this guy. This is Johnny Greenwood. And this guy, Tom York. And this guy, Ed. Well, Ed doesn't play it that often anymore. So it's really that simple. Wanting to play Radiohead and hoping that this guitar would be able to produce their tones. Did it work? Kind of. Not, not at first until I modded almost everything on the guitar. But the key was, it inspired me to play the music that I love. So, back on March 8th, 2004, I went shopping for my first electric guitar at a local music store called Steve's Music Store. And if you're from Canada, you may recognize the name. They have a flagship store in Montreal, another large shop in Toronto, and my local Ottawa shop. They also have a few more shops in uh, La Belle Province de Quebec. Uh, so I have it all here. I have the paperwork. I have exactly what I paid. So we'll take a look at it on the screen. So there's the price for the Telecaster at the time. It was my first guitar. I also bought a PV Blazer 158. You can see the price of that. And I bought a hard shell case and some strings. So I was set. That was it. I was going to be a rock and roll star. I was ready to go. I also have the original hang tags. This is the uh, one of the tags. Limited lifetime warranty. The original inspection card tag. And uh, the manual that Fender used to include. A 2002 uh, Fender Musical Inst Instruments Corp, printed in USA. It's their, uh, you know, all the setup and all the information about the guitars. Not just the Telecaster, but other guitars as well. So I played this in a band. Stock, it was gig worthy, but I always thought the pickups kind of sounded thin compared to other guitars. I didn't even know what a humbucker was, so I researched what Johnny Greenwood had on his Telecaster, and that led me to searching for Fender Lace Sensor pickups. And I thought that Fender actually made Lace Sensor pickups. I didn't even know it was a different brand. So not realizing that Lace Sensor pickups were the stock pickups that Fender used on a number of Plus Series models of their guitars in the 90s, including the Tele Plus, which is what Johnny Greenwood plays. So it all led back to that. So I looked on eBay. Reverb was not even a twinkle in the eye of whoever created Reverb. I found the neck pickup, 28 bucks, $10 shipping, 38 US sold, I'll take it. And today that pickup is like 79 US. And then I found the dually red humbuckers. You see it here. 29 plus 8, 37 US. Today it's uh, 111. And uh, the gold bridge, I found that somewhere. I don't really recall. So you see it actually says face, a uh, face lender, uh, lace fender. You don't get that on the, on the lace pickups today. I didn't know anything about uh, modding, but uh, the bassist in my band did, uh, did it all. So he routed out the pickup for the, for the bridge and uh, the humbucker. And, that was the start of my mod obsessions, basically. Since then, I've probably changed everything out except for the uh, ferrules and um, ferrules. Changed out everything except for the ferrules. And s since then, I've changed out everything except for the ferrules and the uh, the frets. Why, why can't I remember what those are called? So let's deep dive it. Let's open it up. We'll take a look inside, see what parts are original and what parts uh, I replaced. Let's get going. Let's start it off by checking out the weight of the guitar and uh, it's pretty heavy for my taste anyways it's uh come on zoom in hurry up what are you waiting for why are you waiting 8.58 pounds and this was my first electric guitar so i didn't know that was kind of heavy it's not really heavy i guess compared to a lot of stuff but if i had known that at the time i didn't even know what weight was i didn't even know that was a thing i thought all guitars were the same so here's a pickup resistance and you're going to see a number that i don't understand wait till we get to Move the lighting, come on. I think I'd know by now how to get these these shots. Okay, this one, I don't understand. The uh, dually red, 26. You can see I'm even looking at it. I'm just like, uh, 26. Something must not be connected properly in there. I'm gonna guess it's the kill switch. I don't really know, but if you know, let me know. Or is that is that normal, 26? So let's take off the strings here, and uh, we're gonna take a look. Just cutting them off. I haven't changed these strings. Uh, in years and I've never cleaned this fretboard and you can see the fret wear and just looking at down the the maple neck and then looking up the maple neck you can see the, the dirt and the grime and uh, just using my brush to clean it up make it pretty I'm not even gonna do a fret dressing right now I'm just gonna put new strings on but that's not even the point of this part I don't remember what the point was but we're just gonna open it up take a look at that it's got some varnish or something on top of uh, the little thing on the stuff. Let's do some neck measurements so you can know what it is at the nut. 
1.6565 inch and then the 12th fret it's like 2.0265 inch and then down at the 21st fret 2.1820 and then this is a very slim D neck so let's take a measurement of that it's like 0 0.8490 and then moving down the neck I don't think it changes too much if at all 8 point a little bit 8.80 inches I thought hey I got everything out let me check the, the width of the body too thickness I mean 1.842 inch so that's the thickness of the body some more close-ups of the dirty grime you like it I know you do I don't know there's Johnny Greenwood um, just keeping an eye and making sure I'm doing doing things okay so I got this maple butter stuff never used it before so I thought hey let me just clean the fretboard a little bit I'm not gonna do the frets but I'll do the fretboard at least so I kind of wanted to eat it so I was looking at the, the ingredients and it's not edible but um, you know it's just a cleaner for maple woods and I'm just using it there and that's all I got to say about that and then I'm just wiping it off and trying to get a little bit of clean, cleanliness cleaning it up what is he even saying you know I do these in one take so here's a close-up of one of the frets it's got a little bit of fret wear. You can see I play my uh, G string a lot. I don't know why that would be the one that's getting the most wear, but anyways, let's let's open it up. This is the part I'm waiting for. I haven't done this in years. I haven't taken a look inside. Two screws off the control cavity. Open it up inside. Let's look closer. Close up. You got some CTS pots. You got a kill switch, which I added. That's a, that's a mod. There's a whole other video for that if you want to check that out. I'll try to remember to put that in the cards. Pretty nice wiring I did here. I don't remember doing this, but I did a good job. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm not even mad. And um, yeah, there you go. Let's flip it over, take a look at uh, what else they got in here. And there's the switch, and there's, uh, it's 250K pots. And I just realized that now, I've got a humbucker with 250K. So if you wanna sound, hear what a humbucker sounds like with a 250K pot, you're gonna hear it, because that's what I've got, and that's what I've been doing. I think it sounds pretty good. Doesn't sound good clean though. The humbucker doesn't sound good clean. So taking out the four screws on the on the bridge, and then I'm like, ah, it's stuck. What's going on here? Ah, oh, you son of a, oh no. There's a fifth screw right in the middle. It's hiding underneath the saddles. So take that off, and then we're good to go. Get it out, try not to rip it. And then I'm looking inside here. I shielded the whole thing. I don't know if I needed to, but you know, I, I like modding. And here's the dually red. Um, Nothing really to see here other than the cavity has been routed out a little bit more just so it can fit the humbucker. Put it back together. Five screws. Don't forget the middle one. Remember, there's a fifth. Okay? Don't forget it. I got it. I'm good. While we're here, might as well take off the pit guard so you can see inside there as well. That was the whole point of this. I'm just kidding. Okay, let's take a look at what the um, the blue lace sensor looks like and the wiring and the you know the way the body was routed. I prefer this. It's got a it's got a humbucker route. And it's got the channel that's totally cut open. Patents pending. I hope they got them. Did they, did they get the patent for that? Anyways, uh, pretty simple. Yeah. It's mounted to the pick guard, two screws, and then putting the screws back on. I'm using gold screws because I thought they looked cool. And then uh, something I thought I'd, you know what? Might as well take the neck off. Why not? I used to think years ago, you take the neck off, your guitar's broken, but these are meant to be taken off. It's a parts caster, right? I mean, all guitar, it's not a parts caster. I mean, all. I don't know what I'm saying. All Fender guitars are parts casters. The ones that have, you know, bolt-on necks. They're just parts and they're, they're, maybe they're casters. Okay, shut up. Let's look at the neck close up. It's got um, a Mexican serial number and it's got some crazy drawings and I don't know what any of that means. Uh, just taking a look at the wood and uh, close up in the cavity. Nice and messy. Not really that clean. Nothing uh, standing out, but man, this neck is great. It's, um, it's just been one of the best necks I've ever had. It's really nice and slim. It's got a little bit of finish on the back. You can see they don't do that anymore. They do the satin finish, but this one's like a glossy finish. So I remember playing in the summer and my hands would definitely stick on it. And I'm just gonna give it a spray with this uh, body spray stuff. I think it's Axe Body Spray actually, um, or Smith, something like that. Just clean it up. Might as well clean it up one time. That's the thing with black guitars. They show all the smudges and all the, uh, you know, all the scratches, everything. So one last close-up look. You just have a look and I'll shut up.
Okay, one last, uh, just trying to get a, a good thumbnail here. Trying to look how lame this is. Even I noticed it was lame. There we go. Tried to sync that up. Okay. I'll never be able to do a before and after comparison of what the guitar originally sounded like and what it sounds like now, but let's just hear it. And uh, let's hear it, but let's hear it. So here's my observations after all these years, and this is just with my setup and the amps that I use. The blue pickups are really good for clean, and the dually red is really good with a lot of gain. And that's just uh, how I like it. I think they, they do a really good job. Um, it's kind of limited for that reason, but I still think it's awesome. So. so it was my desire to play and sound like Radiohead, and that's why the Telecaster of all electric guitars to choose from is the one that I chose. And uh, ironically, this guitar doesn't even sound like a Telecaster, so it's kind of funny. It's kind of ironic. All right, play guitar and have fun, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.